So when we talk about card scrapers, um, card scraper is basically just a piece of hardened steel uh, that we're going to wind up putting an edge on to make it cut. Um, they come in all different sizes. This is a gooseneck one. Got a couple of other shapes. They come in various thicknesses. This one's a little bit thinner than the one I'm going to be using. Um, this one's a real flexible one, so I can get a real fine burr on this one, take real light shavings. Um, and that's about what a card scraper is. Uh, to use these, <clears throat> we're going to bend it and engage it in the woods, in the wood, come across and take a scraping. I've already got some off you here so you can see what it's capable of doing of. Um, so when I use this, I want to start above the wood. If I start engaged and then try to push it forward, I'll wind up with a start of a cut here. Uh, it's not what I want because then I have to take that cut or that scrape off uh, to get the, the, the material smooth. So start above your workpiece, bend it, and then bring it down and engage into the cut. See, I'm getting a nice smooth surface. Uh, now I've got all those mill marks gone on this part of the board from my uh, from my drum sander. Uh, I still need to work a little bit on the end of the board. That's looking pretty good. I don't bother going over the wrist of this uh, while I'm recording this, but um, basically I'll do that on <clears throat> both sides of the boards. You know, I'll flip it over to this side, uh, flip it over to the other side of the board. <clears throat> and then when I've got this whole surface card scraped, uh, then I can probably spend about five minutes with the sander and clean it up. So uh, a little bit more about using the card scraper. So I tend to put a burr on this only about a couple of degrees, okay? What I mean by a couple of degrees, uh, I'm gonna introduce a burnisher to it and I'll show you that in just a second. Um, but I introduce the burnisher a little bit off of straight square to that edge. The angle I introduce that burnisher uh, into this card scraper determines uh, what angle I need to hold the card scraper in relation to my work. Um, a lot of people new to card scraping, they try to hold it fairly steep down. Uh, that works for a little while, but the steeper the angle, the, the steeper the angle that I hold the card scraper, the steeper the angle I have to put the burr on it. Uh, the steeper that is, the weaker that burr becomes. Uh, and it's gonna wind up breaking off or sort of getting dull a lot quicker than if we were to put uh, a less steep burr on it. So that's why I tend to use about a, you know, a two or three degree. And I tend to hold my card scraper not quite, you know, vertical, but not quite at 45 degrees either, okay? Uh, and it just makes it last a bit longer. So this burr, realistically, is probably going to last me about mm, 10, 20 minutes, and then I have to put another burr on it. Let's talk about the burr real quick. So, let me draw this out. So what I've got is a card scraper. So <clears throat> what we're going to wind up doing is, first we want to put a burr holding the burnisher flat to our long, wide surface. 
and that's going to wind up putting the burr on it that way. And then we hold the burnisher <coughs> on that couple of degrees off of this edge, and that's going to put that burr back over this way. That little burr is what cuts. Essentially, this is kind of like the burr that we had when we started sharpening chisels. Um, instead of removing it from the chisel because it's going to interfere with our cut, you actually want it on the burnisher on the card scraper this time around because uh, it is what is doing our cutting. So <clears throat> this is one that I need to sharpen, and I'm going to show you how to sharpen it here in a minute. Uh, I tend to use these refrigerator magnets on the back. This burnisher heats up as I'm using it. You can get pretty darn hot. I've actually almost burned my thumbs um, by using a card scraper, you know, uh, pretty aggressively for, for a good 10 minutes. Uh, the little flexible refrigerator magnet helps sort of dissipate that heat so it doesn't quite get as, as hot to your thumbs uh, as it would if you weren't using some sort of insulating material on this. And it doesn't provide a whole lot of insulation, but it does make it a little bit more comfortable to use. So to get the burr on the back of that card scraper, first I'm going to hold <coughs> the card scraper flat on the surface. And I'm going to take my burnisher, and all the burnisher is is a piece of steel that's harder than our, card, uh, our cabinet scraper. Um, these cabinet scrapers over the last couple of years have gotten a lot harder. Uh, they used to be somewhere in the low sort of 50 Rockwell hardness scale. Um, most of mine are made by Lee Valley, and these things are getting up like 58, 62 Rockwell hardness. So they've gotten a good bit harder. Uh, that means older burnishers are actually softer than the metal of my card scraper. Uh, that's not going to be a hardness that's effective to actually put in a burr on this thing. So uh, I bought my card scraper from Ron Hawk. This one came out with a, without a handle. Uh, I wound up putting, uh, got some scrap ash here, so I wound up putting my own handle on it. Um, this one is, I think, Ron Hawk on his page basically says this is uh, harder than any cabinet scraper or card scraper out there at the moment. So. Uh, I haven't had an issue with it, and I've been using it for several years, and you can see still the surface is still perfectly clear. Uh, if you've got a lot of nicks and stuff on this uh, this burnisher, it's probably not hard enough to, to do the job that you're asking for, asking to do, okay? So <clears throat> I start flat, and I'm gonna introduce the tip of the burnisher to the card scraper, and roll it across and in, okay? What it is doing, it's partly pushing that metal uh, towards the inside of the card scraper. It's also rolling it a bit. Uh, rolling is a bit more important. Uh, that actually is more effective in generating that burr. So now I've done that a couple times. Now what I'm going to do is <coughs> take it a hold of vertical. And now I'm going to start closer to the handle and pull that card scraper or the burnisher out along the card scraper. You can see I'm holding it at a slight angle, and I'll do that on both sides. And I'm putting a fair bit of pressure on it. I'm not, you know, sort of putting all my weight on it, but I am putting a little bit of pressure on there. And if this is effective, you should be able to feel a burr on the back side of this thing. I've got a little one here. I've got more of a one here. So let's see how this works. Uh, this card scraper is getting a little old, so it needs to be sharpened. And we'll do that here in a minute. So... You can see I'm getting some decent shavings, but it's nowhere near as good as the, the one I just sharpened a little, you know, earlier today. So let me go ahead and show you how to sharpen this thing. So what I'm going to do is put it in the vise, and uh, I'm going to step to the other side of the camera just to make sure that you can see this. Okay, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Oops, a bit much. Okay, so I've got it mounted in one of my vices, and I'm just going to take, uh, this is a single cut file, uh, this is one I happen to use for, uh, for uh, sharpening my crampons and ice axes, uh, and I've had it for a lot of years, it's uh, still holding up a good, uh, a good cut, so uh, this one works pretty well. So the key to this is I want to hold this file perfectly uh, perpendicular to that edge. So 
And I'm basically going to choke up on it and try to keep it as flat as I possibly can. So what I'm actually doing here is over time that metal on the edge of this card scraper has gotten weakened by routinely putting uh, that burr on it and cutting with it. So now I have to remove that weakened metal. So just following that off. And that seems pretty good for now. So now you can see I've got a kind of a clean edge on that. I don't see any nicks or scrapes or anything on it. So that's looking pretty good. Some people will stop here. What I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to take my 1000 grit water stone and clean this edge up a bit more. Again, being real careful that I keep this card scraper 90 degrees to the surface of my water stone. And the thousands, usually all I wind up doing on this, again, sort of like we did with our chisels, the more we wind up polishing that surface, uh, technically the better it is, but uh, there is sort of a, a point of diminishing returns where it just isn't effective to do it. Uh, that much. So now I'm going to clean up the faces real quick. So I recently saw an article, I'm doing this just by hand, um, I saw an article recently where somebody uses a block of wood to hold that edge and then uh, I saw somebody else where they actually recommended one of those paddles that we use on our jointers to clean up this edge. So I'm going to do the other side. So the edge is looking pretty decent. See a nice, dull, uh, consistent sheen all the way across it. Corners are a little bit different, but I don't really care if the corners are a little bit rounded over. Uh, it's actually kind of a good thing for a card scraper. So let me go ahead and put uh, the burr back on this one. And let's see how this uh, how it cuts after doing this. So you can see what a drastic difference this was. I mean, barely was taking any shavings off before I sharpened it. And now I'm getting these nice sort of papery shavings pretty much the whole length of the cut. And it's only that wide because that's basically with, with the arc I'm bending it. And that's as much of the card scraper as I'm engaging. Uh, but this still, it's still a fair amount of, uh, of cutting. So, so for surface prep, I said, took it back out of uh, my drum sander. Now I need to get rid of all those reputed uh, mill marks on it. Card scraping works great for that. Once I'm done with the card scraping, uh, we're gonna go to the random warp sander. I'll do that here in a minute. Let me back off the camera a little bit just so uh, this is a little bit easier to see. Oops, wrong way. Come on now. Okay. So now I can take my random warp sander. This one happens to be a Festool Rotex. So random orbit sander works by, eh, the old sanders used to spin just on a center axis, so it spin on this point. So what this one does now, it spins on two points, so 
each rotation is slightly different than the previous one. Uh, what that does is it uh, makes a more random pattern in the scratches in the wood. And that's basically all when we're sanding, all we're doing is sort of abrading the wood uh, with finer and finer grits in order to get that scratch pattern in the wood so fine and random that we can't see it with our, with, with our eyes. I mean, we can see it under magnification, but we can't see it uh, with the naked eye. So <clears throat> if I weren't doing card scraping or you know, planing or prepping the surface in some other way, I'd have to rely pretty much just on sanding. If we do that, we usually wind up going to a coarse enough grit to remove the inconsistencies in our piece. So say for example, this came off of, you know, sort of uh, straight off um, a jointer or a planer. Then I've got some significant scallops, probably deep as, as a thousandths, maybe two thousandths of an inch. That's fairly significant. Um, <clears throat> I would have to start at that point, maybe like an 80 grit sandpaper and 80 grit, basically ensuring that I cover the whole piece. I would do a pass across the grain, a pass 90 degrees in one direction, another pass 90 degrees in the other direction, and then finish up with a pass going with the grain. Um, that is not a sort of set rule. This is kind of what I found that uh, works well for me to ensure that I've got every piece of this board sufficiently sanded. So I will do that on both sides with 80 grit, then I move to 100 grit, do the same thing all over again, move to 120 grit, again, same four passes, ensuring that I've got everything done, um, 180, and depending on what kind of finish I'm using, either stop at 180, maybe go to 220. Uh, if I'm sanding down a finish, then I may do 320 or 400 or even higher, depending on uh, what I'm looking to do with that particular finish. But generally, we can stop somewhere between 180 and 220. So this takes a lot of time. Um, you know, basically going from 80 to grit, working all the way through 80, 100, 120, 150, 180. Um, I could be here a good 20, 30 minutes just sanding, uh, you know, the, this board. Uh, hopefully in that time, I would get both uh, sides done. But, you know, sanding takes a lot of time. So. Uh, I generally, you know, want to shorten that time to get uh, from my from my rough finish to my finish uh, my qual my finish quality surface. Okay, um, so I'm going to start at 180. So now I've got this card scraped. I can skip all those previous steps. Uh, I don't need to, to to go that far down. So one thing you got to keep in mind with a random orbit sander is we want to let the weight of the sander do the work. Um, I'm going to put a dot on this and hopefully this will demonstrate why. Um, the Rotex is a little different animal. Uh, it has a regular random orbit sanding uh, setting then it has an aggressive one. I would not dare do this what I'm about ready to do in an aggressive one because it will remove my fingerprint in a hurry. So I'm going to turn this on and keep an eye on that little dot. If I put weight on this. What I just did. I had it on the aggressive setting. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. If I put weight on this, it stops the paper. Okay? This is no longer cutting. So, if I put excessive weight on the sander, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to wind up stopping the pad. Uh, and that's not what I want because then I'm going to get. Uh, very deep scratches, a repeating pattern that I don't want. I want a completely random pattern, okay? Uh, so be careful when you're doing that. Uh, a lot of the sanders, a lot of the random orbit sanders um, will do the same thing. Um, the Festool is a little bit, like I said, a little bit better made sander. It's one of the, the more quality, high quality sanders on the, on the market. Uh, Merca, um, would be another good brand. Who else? Uh, there's another uh, European brand I'm not thinking about at the moment. Uh, but these have a continuous gearing on it, so they don't tend to stop as much. And as you saw when I had it the first time around, I had it in the other setting, 
uh, which is the aggressive setting, and that will remove an awful lot of material in a hurry. Uh, be careful if you have a Rotex uh, that you're not inadvertently having any on the wrong setting, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, so, what I'll, like I said, what I'll do is I'll stand against the grain, another pass 45 one direction, another pass 45 in the other direction, and then finish with the grain. And I want to make sure that each pass overlaps the previous one, so I'm not accidentally leaving a section of my board uh, unsanded. Now this is pretty pretty smooth just with those few minutes that I've got there. Um, the other thing, thing you want to do is before we put a finish on this or staining or anything else, we want to sort of inspect the surface, make sure that it's blemish free as much as we can possibly get it there. Uh, for example, if I were to put a stain on this and I hadn't sufficiently sanded this surface down, uh, I would see deep scratches. And there's no way to sort of recover from that other than just strip the whole thing down and start the whole sanding process all over again. Uh, that's not a good way to go because we just spent hours sanding things, okay? Um, so make sure you got this surface ready to go before you start introducing any stain. Um, you know, sort of shellac is, you know, we can put some shellac on it and it's no big deal if we have to sand it down, the card's great because it's easy to repair. Uh, we don't want to get to the point where we're putting a, a sort of a high finished surface on it and then all of a sudden realize we got these little swirls all over it and then we have to go again. Uh, have to go back to the starting point of prepping the surface all over again. A couple ways you can uh, test to see if you got that was not good. <laughs> All right. Are you using denatured alcohol? Wetting the surface will help me see if I have any sort of blemishes on it. Nice thing about uh, the denatured alcohol, um, it won't raise the grain. I should be able to see if there's any sort of irregularities on this. Um, it looks good at the moment. The other thing I can do is take some uh, light and use a raking light. Come back and forth and look at this surface. I can see down here, I haven't touched this part of the board with my card scraper or sandpaper. I can still see those repetitive nail marks on this. I don't see any blemishes on this side. And be real diligent about checking these surfaces. Like I said, there's a, it's pretty disheartening to get to uh, the point when you're ready to put the finish on it, or, or already put the finish on it, and then you realize you still got deep scratches or some scratches from a previous grit that you haven't uh, sufficiently uh, sort of removed with the fire grits. Um, so more or less, this is kind of my process for, for finishing, getting these, uh, these wood surfaces. Uh, to a state where I'm ready to put the finish on it. And again, uh, I do this almost exclusively with all my pieces. I'll run through the, the drum sander at about 220, card scrape, five, 10 minutes of sanding, and then they're almost always ready uh, duh, 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 to get the finish on. So that's about it for this one.